Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, Wednesday nights, we've been talking about our inheritance, and we're going to continue with that tonight. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Romans chapter 4. And uh, how many know we have an inheritance, and we don't wait uh, till we die to get it? Uh, I think a lot of people think, well, you know, in the sweet by and by, when we get to heaven, all these glorious things are going to happen. How many know you need all the promises today? You don't need healing in heaven. You don't need riches in heaven. You don't need any. My goodness, just the presence of God will keep you for a thousand years. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to find out more about it tonight. Romans chapter 4 and uh, verse 13. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I want to make mention that uh, I'm doing that prayer uh, conference. They've asked me to be a part of that, and I will be uh, uh, glory to God. Are you walking in hand in hand? Look at that. Praise God. I, hallelujah. <laughs> Good to see you tonight. Anyway, I'll be doing that prayer conference on the 23rd of this month, and uh, we'll have more details about that. Good things are happening. Romans chapter 4, let's go down to verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir, the heir of the world, the heir of the world, meaning everything that's in the world, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. How many believe you have a, an inheritance? Hallelujah. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made, of vo made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law works wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace, everybody say grace. grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but that, to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who makes alive the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. My goodness, that's faith. Hallelujah. That's the definition of faith. God calls those things which be not yet. I always like adding that yet because it's coming. Glory to God. As though they were. Glory to God. You are the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have been grafted in. We are the seed of Abraham. Now I'm more the seed of Abraham than you, but we're all the seed of Abraham. Go on, somebody. Now, <laughs> you're the children of God. I said you're the children of God. Hallelujah. You're part of the royal family. You're blessed now. Amen. You know, I, I, when I think about that, I, I, I'm just... Uh, anybody ever see that movie, Annie? You know, uh, the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. You didn't know you'd get a concert tonight, did you? Anyway, we got, that's the second song I sung tonight. Glory to God. <clears throat> anyway, she goes from a horrible drunken caretaker to a very wealthy father who adopts her. Come on, somebody. I mean, you've been adopted into some wealth. Glory be to God. Uh, you've been adopted into the, into the royal family. You've been adopted into the God class. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. When you realize that you're heirs of all the things that, that we lost in the garden, everything that the dominion, all the things that God had planned for man, we were redeemed back to it. We've been redeemed from the curse. We are now blessed going in and blessed going out. Hallelujah. So get ready, get ready, get ready. God, mm, he, he just wants us to realize we're the heir of the world. Hallelujah. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to the kingdom of darkness. It belongs to the kingdom of light. Turn with me to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 20. Now let's go down here to verse uh, 32. Hallelujah. And now, brethren... I commend you to God and to the word of His grace. Everybody say grace. Now we know that that, that word grace means gifts. It means the favor of God. Uh, you know, it's charis. Uh, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, uh, 
Charis, uh, definition of charis is uh, the unmerited favor of God. Well, it, it's more than that. It, it's gifts, it's favor, it's God's loving kindness being poured out. Hallelujah. So it says here, it says, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, of His favor, of His gifts, which is able to build you up. <laughs> build you up and to give you an inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. Among all them which are sanctified. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The word of His grace is able to build you up because you know that you know God loves you. Come on. And that He's trying to get something to you. He's not trying to take something away from you. He's trying to cause that charis or the gift of His favor to be working in your life. Hallelujah. He's trying to build you up and give you an inheritance. Hallelujah. And, and He wants to bless you so big. <laughs> he wants to bless you going and bless you. He wants to bless you like, like Abraham was blessed. Amen. We discussed this last week. Abraham was blessed with gold and silver and and, and flocks and, and servants and, you know, handmaidens. I mean, he had, he had an entourage everywhere he went. He, did, he didn't just show up in his rambler. Come on, somebody. He, he, he went forth with an entourage with every type of, 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 of wealth, gold and silver. But God spoke something very, very clearly to Abraham. He said, I'm blessing you to be a blessing. Did you hear what I said? He said, I've blessed you to be a blessing. Glory to God. Well, if you realize that, that God has blessed you to be a blessing, then what you receive from Him, man, now it gets exciting. Woo, glory be to God. We're, 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 I'm, about, I'm about to bless somebody big time. Glory to God. Amen. And not only that, it causes His kingdom to work. It causes the, the church to work. It causes all of the things and functioning of the church to work. But more than that, glory be to God, it comes back to you. Every time you try to get rid of it, God's a bigger giver. <laughs> he causes it to come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over, and bless you. Good time. Hallelujah. <laughs> so He's trying to, through His word of grace, He's trying to give you an inheritance. And, and it's time for us, and, and really that inheritance is so that we're so blessed we can be a giver instead of, uh, you know, instead of just having enough, you know, just sheep trying to get by, just, you know, just, just somebody who has just a little bit. No, you always are to have exceeding, abundantly, above all that you could ask or even think. Hallelujah. Why? Having all sufficiency for every good thing. Glory to God. Every good work. Amen. It's time to take back the kingdom, take back the kingdom uh, from the kingdom of darkness. And, and uh, how many know that if we take from the kingdom of darkness, uh, we literally are taking back what belongs to us. The enemy has had it too long. Lucifer, he, he became the prince of this world, and now our inheritance is this world. And God wants us to take dominion of this world and take it back from the kingdom of darkness. Come on, glory to God. It does not belong to the kingdom of darkness. It does not belong to the kingdom of darkness. It belongs to the church. And we've been talking about that, and we've got very clear that God made sure that, that we'd realize that He gave all these things to the church, it says. Amen. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 25. You know, most of the church today, they, they don't want anything. Oh, just give me enough for me and mine. I mean, you know, that's the true definition of greed. Only wanting enough for yourself. And, and yet, God says, I want you to have more than enough. He said, I want you to have the blessing of Abraham. Same type of blessing where he was so wealthy, but he, he was blessed to be a blessing. Now, Genesis chapter 25. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 25. And go down here to verse uh, 34. Genesis, whoops, yeah, there we go. And then Jacob, Jacob gave Esau, <laughs> I got I to gotta preface this. I, I just want to, I didn't want to read the whole thing uh, just for time. 
but uh, you know the story. Uh, Jacob wanted the birthright, and Jacob was not the firstborn. Esau was. And the birthright really deals with inheritance, and it deals with the blessing. How many know the inheritance is the blessing? And so uh, Jacob, uh, he set out, and, and really the mom was right in on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she favored Jacob. And, and, and Esau was just kind of a hunter, and he's just kind of a good old boy. And, 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 and he's like, you know. <laughs> so it says, then Jacob gave Esau bread and, uh, you know, some chili. How many know people sell out for chili? Come on. They, they <laughs> you get some good chili, uh, you know. I, I, I really don't need that birthright. And he said uh, he had some bread and some a pottage of, you know, of lentil. And, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau, now it says he despised his birthright. That, that's really not the, the correct Hebrew. He was indifferent to it. Did you hear what I said? Esau was indifferent to his, his uh, birthright. Uh, in, in other words, you know, whatever. And so it's kind of like some of the Christians today. It's like, uh, uh, how many know you've got an inheritance and you're blessed? And, well, you know. I really, I'm not, I, I just, I'm just glad I'm saved. And, and that's all I, I, that's all I want. Okay, well, that, that's good you're saved. I mean, that's, that's where you start. But how many know God wants to use you? Come on. And how many know when God begins to use you, you've got to begin to figure out how God, you know, God puts his blessing on it. Amen. And then he can, he can use you in whatever you want to do. Glory to God. Well, uh, Esau, oh my goodness, he sold out for some chili and some probably good bread, probably some sourdough, I don't know. But he, he, was, he was like, give me that and I'll be satisfied, you get the birthright. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you, don't sell out for chili. Come on. That's the, <laughs> if we can make it clear, God's got a whole lot better than a bowl of chili. God, God's got a whole lot better than whatever you're thinking it, well, I just, I'm just satisfied with this. No, it's time to dream bigger. It's time, it's time to believe bigger. It's time to, to dream again. It's time to rise up. If you've got breath in your lungs, it's time to rise up and say, Lord, use me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not, not just, you know, well, you know, I'm just satisfied. Being kind of indifferent like Esau was, just kind of indifferent to it all. No. The devil's had his day long enough. The kingdom of darkness has had what belongs to the church long enough. And now it's time for us to take it back. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So Jacob ended up with the blessing. Woo, and we know, my goodness, he took it. And he did whatever he, he, he seized it. Hallelujah. Well, guess what? Uh, Jacob, he got it and, and he walked in it. And we know from from the Bible, that he was blessed. Hallelujah. Turn with me now to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And uh, God's calling right now, I think. Matthew, cha Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. How many love God tonight? Matthew chapter 5. Go down here to verse 5. Blessed, now let me preface this, this is the Beatitudes. How many have heard of the Beatitudes? Amen. How many know the Beatitudes are not for heaven? Hello. They're for now. The Beatitudes are for now. Now I, I could read all the Beatitudes and, and make the whole evening about the Beatitudes, but we don't have time. Now go to verse 5. Blessed are the meek. How many know we're supposed to be meek now? Amen. Uh, it, it, meek is not weak. Meek means you know where your source is. Uh, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. Woo, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. When you know who your source is, you know how big <laughs> the inheritance is. When you know how big God is, come on, God's a big God. Why are we always thinking, well, you know, I don't know if we're going to make it on this, or we don't, how are we going to pay this bill, how are we going to do this, how, how, how? 
God. He's bigger than anything you're up against. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, he's already figured it out. He's already got it. Uh, he's got a million ways to make you a million dollars. Amen. Well, I don't want a million dollars. You telling me you don't want to be a giver? I had I went to this one church and I said to him, I said, uh, the and and I just taking it from scripture, the amount you want <laughs> to to be a blessing, the the way you measure it, it shall be measured to you. Mark four, and uh, uh, you if you want to be a, a you know some people say well I, I I'd like to I'd like to you know and I brought out the the subject of getting blankets for for the poor uh, during the winter it was cold and this was up in Missouri and I said uh, some of you are at thirty fold. Yeah, I mean, your mind is, well, I, I, Lord, give me enough for me and, and, and this amount over so I can get a certain amount of blankets. Well, why not 60-fold? Why not 100-fold? You know, some people say, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I want to I be able to buy 10 blankets for the poor. Why, why not 1,000 blankets? Well, I could never get 1,000 blankets. No, 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 you said that. God said 5,000. Come on, somebody. 10,000. Well, has everything to the point, it says, the measure, you measure it. It shall be measured to you. So in other words, if you're measuring it out 100-fold, you're walking in 100-fold. But if you're measuring it out 30-fold, that's all you'll ever walk in the Word. Most people walk at 30-fold. Most, it's getting quiet in this... <laughs> Most people walk in 30-fold because that's all they can put their faith to. It's time to put your faith to a big God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know, I was doing a revival at this church when I was teaching on this. And, and uh, the last night of the revival, the whole lobby was stacked with blankets I mean, they just grabbed that thing and ran with that thing. Now, it's the middle of summer. Please do not do this right now. And so, <laughs> you want to bring in ba bags of ice maybe. But no, I, I, we, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, we're going to start doing some things. Amen. We're going to start doing some things. We're going to start doing some things and people are going to take notice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. God wants the fullness of this earth to transfer to the church. Glory to God. We got dominion back. We got it back from the devil, and we reign now. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We, know, we have to know what belongs to us. We have to know and, and start walking in these things. Why? Because we got a job to do. Psalm 37, verse 11. Now, this is where, in, in the book of Matthew, it's, it's quoted from, from Psalm 37. So Psalm 37, verse 11 says, But the meek shall inherit the earth. But it goes on. And it says, And shall delight themselves in the abundance of shalom. That word peace there in the Hebrew is the word shalom, which means nothing lacking, nothing broken. They shall delight themselves in the fullness of the blessing. The meek shall inherit the earth and walk in nothing lacking, nothing broken. He is our shepherd. We shall not lack. Come on, somebody. We shall not want. Hallelujah. God's trying to get us to a point where we see how big God is. Do you know, when they were in the wilderness, uh, God's saying they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited me. They kept saying, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's almost as if we look at God like being a man. He's God. And he's, he, he's, he created everything. Matter of fact, if he has to create something new just for you, he'd do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory be to God. The meek shall inherit and delight in the abundance of shalom. <laughs> glory to God. Whew. Inherit, the word inherit here in the Hebrew 
means to seize, defend, and keep. And it reminds me of keeping the garden. How many know God just said that to Adam? He said, this is your job, Adam. Keep the garden. Keep the garden. Keep, defend it. There's an enemy out there. Keep the garden. How many know he didn't keep the garden? He, he listened to the enemy. Keep the garden. How many know we got that job today to keep the garden? We, we need to keep the earth. We, we're, we're to inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit. Come on, somebody. We've got to get to a point where we realize that we are to, to keep the garden. It never ended. It never ended. That, that proclamation, that, de that declaration that God made to man in the garden, keep the garden, God is saying it to you, keep the garden. Now, keep the garden is twofold. It's, it's in the natural, keep the earth. Watch over it. Realize you're stewards of it. It belongs to you. But, but the other area in it is your garden is in here too, spiritually. How many know that you sow seed into your heart? And as you sow that seed into your heart, come on somebody, you sow that seed into your heart, it will grow forth right out of your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. You sow the word in your mouth, you'll speak the word. You sow the world in your mouth, or in your heart, you, you'll be speaking the world. God wants us to develop and have harvest. The harvest in your life is dependent completely on what you, you plant. And God said, if you plant the word, you'll have the abundance of the word and you'll flourish. Amen. But if you plant anything else, you'll, you'll get that harvest. I only want to plant the word. You get the word, you're going to have a good life. Come on, somebody. Amen. You're going to be blessed going in and blessed going out. You know, and you know, yeah, let's just determine right now you'll never fear again. You'll never fear again. If, if fear tries to get on you, don't do what you used to do. Matter of fact, take a small step in it. Say, this year, I do not fear. Come on, say that. This year, I do not fear. And when the enemy speaks speak something, and, and there might, might be some, some uh, just oppression, how many of the enemy works uh, uh, with through things? Might be a bill, might be whatever it is. That fear, when it comes, respond completely different by speaking to it and saying, this year I don't fear. I just don't, this year I'm not fearing anymore. This, this year I choose not to fear. And then it, and that oppression comes again. It, no. Maybe last year, but this year I don't fear. When you begin to practice, when you begin to speak, when you begin to say the right things, you will begin to walk in God's peace. And that peace is shalom and it's irene. It is the fullness of the blessing. Glory be to God. And how many know the opposite of fear is faith? It's time to stay in faith. Come on, somebody. It says we are to rule and to reign. And, and, and rule over this earth and enjoy. It literally says enjoy. Enjoy the creation. Enjoy our shalom. Enjoy knowing that God is our source. If God is your source, I had to learn this. Uh, the Lord came to me one day and He said, uh, when are you going to make me your source? I'd been traveling for several years. I said, Lord, you are my source. He said, no, when, when are you going to make me your source? I said, Lord, you, you are my source. He came to me a third time. He usually does three times and then I wake up. Uh, he said, when are you going to make me your source? I said, Lord, what are you trying to say to me? You are my source. He said, then why are you always fussing around the first of the month? I said, well, uh, Lord, I, I, he, said, How, he said, am I your source or not? I said, yes, you are my source. I will never fuss around the first of the month again. After that conversation with the Lord, I, uh, Kathleen and I went off to go preach at this uh, revival. 
And boy, I was preaching that revival, and the pastor was so nice. He got up every night, spent about a half an hour uh, raising a great offering for us. He, he got up there and he said, let's bless the, the evangelist. Uh, hadn't he been good? Let's give him the best uh, offering. Let's bless him. And he, every night he just go on about a half an hour, just going on and on and on. And, and you could see the buckets fall you know, back. And, and every night, the whole week, you know, and the last night of the revival, he got up there and he said, I want everybody to know we got enough in the offerings this week to pay off the west wing of our building. First thought I had was, now this is true, God is my source. See, that was a test. God was speaking to me. I said, God's my source, not man. Matter of fact, man can't even give enough to satisfy me. Then, <laughs> then, then it, he came and gave me an offering that kind of covered my gas. I told Kathleen as we're driving out, and she said, Dad, let me back there. I mean, she wanted she to claw the eyes out of this guy. I was just like, because she said, that, he's a liar. Taking up offerings every night and he gives you that. I mean, she's like, <laughs> I said, wait a minute now. I said, God's been dealing with, with us and that God is our source. And I said, let's rejoice. I said, he doesn't have enough to bless us. And we started singing. And we sang all the way home. And we rejoiced all the way home. And we had a time, praise God. I think it was the next day we got a, a, a check in the mail. And the check in the mail was from a university I had gone to that they said, you overpaid us. I don't remember overpaying anybody. <laughs> and they gave me a check well able to pay off the west wing of my building. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Why? Because I stayed in faith. Because I trusted my source. God is our source. Amen? Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. Oh, the Lord is good. God is about to bless you. God's, about, God's got a suddenly He's about to give you. I'm not just talking about financial. God wants to bless you with health. He wants to bless you with, with, with supernatural things in your life. He wants to bless you big time. Hallelujah. <laughs> he wants to bless you so much. Uh, it's kind of like me with my daughters growing up. I, 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 when they were growing up, I just want to bless them. I just want to bless them and bless them. People say, if you do that, it'll make them... It'll make them uh, 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 spoiled. spoiled, yeah. It'll make them spoiled. I said, no, no, no. We're teaching them character traits. I mean, if you teach a child character, they can handle the money. They can handle the goods. They can handle, handle the nice new bike, the doll, whatever it might be. Uh, they can handle those things because now they know that it's a blessing. Most people grow up not being taught character, so even when they grow up and they're adults, they still can't handle the blessing because they don't know how to handle it. But if you teach character, if you teach children how they should go, then when they rise up, they won't depart from that. They'll rise up and they'll go in the things of God. I promised Kathleen, I said when we had Andrea, or actually she was pregnant with Andrea, I said, Andrea will never know one day of public school. She'll never know one day. We'll teach her. We'll train her up in the way that she should go. And I said, uh, we'll homeschool. And we'll, do, we'll, we'll teach from the Bible. And we'll teach character. And, and we got a hold of a good curriculum that also had character with it. And, and we said, this is the way our children are going to be raised. And then Amy came along. We did the same thing with Amy. Amen. And, and guess what? They're both serving the Lord today. Come on, somebody. Why? Because they're raised up in the things of God. It, 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 they, didn't, they didn't someday just, well, I think I'll try that. They grew up in it. They saw their daddy. They saw their mom. 
They saw our sincerity. They saw our faith. They saw, they saw us believe, and they, they, they'd get sick, and they'd get well, and, and they'd see the power of God. They saw the reality of the reality of God. Hallelujah. They saw that it's real. It's real. It's real. Amen. How many know this book is real? We're not just, you know, playing church here. You know, they, they always say, well, you know, the worst kids are uh, preacher's kids, PKs. Worst kids in school are the PKs. Do you know why? Because they've got to be twice as bad just to fit in. They're considered goody-goody because they're a preacher's kid. So they, they go the opposite direction to fit in. Well, I wasn't going to allow that with my kids. No, they weren't going to be. And they said, well, how did they meet any friends or anything? Oh, my goodness, they had friends. Matter of fact, they had more friends and more places, and we traveled all over this country from coast to coast, and they had pen pals and friends all over the place, and they, they had great friends and even friends at home in the neighborhood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But they weren't going to have to be in a position where they had to wonder, you know, how, uh, how do I fit into this? No, you're the leader. I used to tell my girls, you're champions. You're more than conquerors. You're overcomers. But you, you got to put that into them. Well, same thing with adults. If you never had that in you, it's about time you get in the book and you find out who you are and the authority of the believer and you start rising up and you begin to handle the things that God... God said, if, you, if, you're, if you're faithful in the little, I'll give you just a little more. i give you a little bit. No. He said, if you're faithful in the little, I give you much. I had a guy one time said to me, he said, uh, well, I don't want much. I said, well, just don't be faithful. But if you're going to be faithful, God will keep blessing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's for His righteous cause. It's for His kingdom. Hallelujah. People, people have been jealous of Jewish people for years. Why? Because they own the banks, they own the, the money, they own the big stores, they, they own the jewelry store. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they, I, I mean, we, we, they, people have always, we just, you know, why? Because they knew the blessing of Abraham. Jewish people today know the blessing of Abraham. And then, then you know what happened? That same blessing was on the early church. They said, they said <laughs> it, it's harder for a rich man. You know, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and the, you know, it's hard for the rich man to get into the kingdom of God than, you know, and, and, uh, what? You know what I mean? And the disciples said, well, then, what are we going to do? Why did they say that? Why did they get astonished? It's because they were wealthy. So they were still like, well, what do we do now? They were blessed. Well, you know, Jesus was poor. I don't know how I got into this. It's not even in my notes. I'm sorry. I think God just wants us to, to hear this tonight. But we got, we, got, we got to know, Jesus wasn't poor. Jesus was blessed. How many know, well, Peter got an offering. Paul got offerings. But Jesus didn't ever get any offerings. He was like the big guy. Come on, somebody. If you want to give an offering, you probably thought of Jesus first. Amen? Matter of fact, it, was, it says there was so much given into his substance. Whew. Hallelujah. He started out wealthy. All the kings of the east, all the kings. Same countries that came to Solomon made Solomon rich. Same countries that came to Jesus. Not three, all the kings. Hallelujah. Whew. Gold. Frankincense. Not Frankenstein. Frankincense. And myrrh. Hallelujah. Murray was the short guy. He was the accountant. Anyway... <clears throat> Hallelujah, there was a lot of gold. Amen. <laughs> Same blessing that was on Abraham was on Jesus. Come on, somebody. That's why people are so jealous of Jewish people. That's why they wanted to exterminate them. Jealousy. But guess what? We went through Catholicism. That was 200 years after Jesus. And, and then people started taking the vow of poverty. And poverty came into the church. Poverty is of the curse, is listed amongst the curse in Deuteronomy 28. 
you have an inheritance. I, I was going to I was going to tell you about this. I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, I got an inheritance recently, and and I was thrilled. Okay, all excited over it, and and uh, it was a whole lot more than I thought. It was big, and I was so blessed. And don't get jealous. I'm sorry, uh, but it was a big inheritance, and and uh, and I, I began to read uh, what belonged to me from it, and I got so excited. And matter of fact, your names were in there too. And your names were listed. And it was so big. And man, I, I, Kathleen and I danced around the house for about an hour. And we just so blessed. And we saw all the names of the people in our church in, in, written in the last will and testament of it. And we were so excited. And I want you to know, you should be excited too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You were jealous for a moment. I, I, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> Turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. Amen. About time we realized what we got. If you had a natural will, you'd be thrilled. You would be thrilled. Especially if it was big. You'd be excited over it. This is bigger. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father, which has made us qualified, that word meet means qualified, which has made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Hallelujah. You are qualified if you are born again. If you are a born again believer, you're qualified for the inheritance. Hallelujah. Well, I just don't know if I'm ever going to have any of those things. I just don't know if I'm ever going to have the blessing. And blessing. No, no, no. You <laughs> giving thanks, <laughs> big time thanks to the Father, which has made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance. You're qualified. If you're born again, you're qualified. You are blessed. Come on, somebody. Notify your face. You are qualified. Your name's in the book. You're listed. You don't. Have, I mean, you, you you can get excited over this. Amen. You are qualified for the inheritance, and the inheritance doesn't happen when you die. It happens when the one giving the inheritance dies. He died two thousand years ago. What are you waiting for? Hallelujah. About time we realize we have an inheritance. Amen. You have an inheritance. Woo! You have an inheritance. You're qualified. You're born again. You. You are qualified. You know, we are joint heirs. We are joint heirs with Christ. What does that mean? We are joint heirs with Christ. His will, His last will and testament, activated <laughs> at His death, activated redemption, activated the inheritance. Glorify. Oh, glory be to God. <clears throat> but, Jesus not only died, but He rose again. We are joint heirs with Him because He died activating the inheritance, but then He came back to be the executor over it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God. He's the executor over the last will and testament. Matter of fact, it's so much in Him, it is His Word and He is the Word. He's the Word made flesh. He is the blessing. He is the Word. He is everything. Oh, my goodness. He became the executor of the inheritance. And every precious promise now is yes and amen. Hallelujah. So we're joint heirs with Him because He not only died, He rose. Hallelujah. He, he, he activated it. And then he said, I'll be over it, and I'll make sure you, you're blessed. Amen. Glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. We need to know who we are. I said, we need to know who we are. We've inherited. It's activated when you're born again. We have an inheritance of the character of God. 
You see, my natural father, I inherited some things from him. Great wisdom. Oh, no, uh, his humor, I think that's all I got. Uh, <laughs> but many times we inherit, you know, uh, maybe facial, uh, you know, someone has a big nose or they have little eyes or whatever it might be. You in, a lot of, we say he inherited that. You know, uh, he got that from the genes. <laughs> he inherited it from their genes. Well, we inherited more than silver and gold. We inherited more than this world. We inherited the very character of God. Adam was to walk in the fullness of the blessing. Adam was to walk in the fullness of the garden of abundance. The word Eden means abundance. He was to walk in the goodness of God. He was to walk every day by faith. He was to walk in all of these things and making God his source. He was being groomed in sonship. Now the Word of God is grooming us in sonship. The Word of God is grooming us so that we'll rise up in Him and know who we are and what we have. We've got it. You know, the Bible is filled with precious promises. All of those things is telling us what belongs to us now. We've been redeemed from the curse. We're not going to be redeemed someday. We were redeemed, redeemed on the cross. Hallelujah. That means you're redeemed from the curse of the law. You're redeemed from the curse. You're redeemed from the curse of the law, which now you're walking in grace. Come on, somebody. And now we're walking in the gifts. We're walking in the blessings. We're walking in the favors. <laughs> the favor of God. Just as if Adam never sinned. You're not going to be more redeemed tomorrow. You are redeemed right now. Hallelujah. Redeemed from the curse. Nothing lacking, nothing broken. Walking in the fullness of the goodness of God. There are things out there right now that God said, I want to give to you. Amen. <clears throat> well, can I start getting out there and seizing it and keeping it and taking it and defending it and, and uh, uh, you know, claiming it? <laughs> yeah. As long as a Christian don't own it. If a Christian owns it, you can't have it. That's coveting. Did you hear what I said? So I sure would like that plane. What is it? Is it owned by a Christian? Yeah. Well, it's not yours. Ooh, I've always liked that house on the hill. Well, who owns it? I don't know. Well, find out, because if it's a Christian, you can't have it. But how many know God's got a better one for you? Because it'll it'll be custom made for you. Amen. How, we, we had a house built for us one time, and we, we just kept making changes with the builder. Hey, can we have this done? And, and can you tear out the ceiling here so it's a tall ceiling? And, and can you put in a big, giant spa tub jacuzzi in the bathroom? Can you, and we, we had the whole wall taken out upstairs, and we, we just kept making changes. And he was just like, yeah, I, sure. I, we can, don't need a wall there. We can take that out. As a matter of fact, be less money to put, you know, a smaller wall behind that, you know. And it, it, he said, oh. well, what were we doing? We were customizing it. Amen. Well, God's trying to get you to a point where you realize the sky, no, the sky's not even the limit. You're limitless. God's trying to get you to a point where you take the limits off God. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. You've been given His character. You've been given his, 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 you even look like him. I do not. Yes, you do. You look like him in the spirit. Amen. You got characteristics more like your father now. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm very tall in the spirit. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Amen. We need to know who we are. And we need to know now what belongs to us as part of the royal family. Hallelujah. Let's go down to verse 14. We'll end there. Verse 14. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I meant Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 says, 
has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Everybody say all things. All things. By whom also he made the world. So we're joint heirs, and Jesus has become the executor of the will, and he is over all things. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. And I do need to say this. <clears throat> How many know the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just? You know, there was a book written by uh, a man that I, I really, really honor uh, and studied under for many years. But he got it wrong on this point. How many know nobody's perfect? Is that right? You see, well, Bobby is. But I, none of us. <laughs> but, Thank you, sir. Amen. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and yeah, and Michael. Michael's pretty right. pretty smart. Amen. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> but the rest of us. Uh, what was I talking about? Anybody know? Was that Hebrews? Oh. Huh? You were studying under somebody you respected. Oh yeah, yeah I, was, I was studying under somebody I respected. Yeah, that's it. And uh, he came out with a book that said, where it says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, that we're not supposed to be uh, uh, wanting that because that's coveting. It's not coveting. It has nothing to do with coveting. And yet that's what was in his book. He said that's coveting. Well, let me tell you something. You cannot covet what belongs to you. And the wealth of the world does not belong to the world. And the wealth of the wicked doesn't belong to the wicked. It had already shifted when Jesus went to the cross. Jesus became the, the executor over this world and the fullness thereof. And everything that's in this world is going to come out of the pockets of all of those that have, have are of the wicked. And it's going to transfer to the righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. The righteous are those that walk by faith. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory be to God. So, literally, when it says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just or the righteous, uh, that's, it's saying that it doesn't belong to them. It doesn't belong to them. The wealth of the wicked doesn't belong to them. Everything, the fullness of the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to the Lord, and Jesus is over it. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Amen? Hallelujah. He is <laughs> heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's not over it. He made it. He, he's, he's not only over it. He made it. He, and he made it for you. Now let's go down to verse 14. That's where I wanted to go. Verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits, talking about angels? Everybody say angels. Are they not all ministering spirits or angels sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Come on, somebody. That word salvation is the word soteria in the Greek. It means wholeness. It doesn't mean just getting to heaven. So many times we, you know, uh, oh, oh, the person receives salvation. Well, you receive salvation every time you receive anything from God. Did you hear what I said? It's the wholeness of God. It is the fullness of the blessing. It is the soteria of God. Soteria, uh, uh, if you would say it this way, sozo comes from the word soteria. Sozo would be uh, saved, but it also means healed, delivered. Come on. Uh, it means all those things. Soter is Savior, but it's also healer. It's also deliverer. Come on. It, it, it's all of it. Come on. Glory to God. Are they not, talking about angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be the heirs of this sound, such a great salvation? Come on. Hallelujah. How many know this is good news? I said this is good news. And it's talking about the shalom. It's talking about the soteria. It's talking about the abundance. It's talking about this gospel that is so big, so wonderful, exceeding abundantly above what you could ask or even think. Hallelujah. It's time <laughs> to send your angels forth. It's time to send your angels forth to bring in for you an heir. 
the blessing. Hallelujah. The inheritance of the saints. Hallelujah. Say this after me. I decree, I decree that my angels, that my angels are, bringing are bringing in my inheritance, my inheritance. Right, now. right now. It's mine. It's mine. I, take it I take it back from the kingdom of darkness and bring it into the kingdom of light for the glory of God. Angels, go forth in Jesus' name. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And if you believe that by faith and know that you know that your name is in His last will and testament, the angels are bringing it in. Right now. Everybody say right now. Right say it right, right now. now. Let's take it right, right now. now. Hallelujah. Anybody have a, a prayer request tonight? Uh, Brenda? Luana? Well, I, I just pray right now for Luana, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that any blood clots that are there, if there are, they are dissolving now in Jesus' name. And we believe it. And we speak it, it's done now as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. And she is suffering a lot. And yeah. she had some cream left over when she had radiation done before. And she's been putting it on. And is her name Debbie? Or what is Debbie. It? Debbie, yeah. And she's going to the doctor tomorrow. I, I've, I've prayed for her several times. Yeah. Let, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we lift up Debbie before you. We thank you that, that whatever that, that bump, whatever that is, we thank you that it's dissolving now. It is dissolving now. Whatever is, is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. It's dissolving now. By the blood of Jesus Christ. There it goes. Ooh, it's going down. Going down. In Jesus' name. Completely. Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You're just putting your hand up on your head. Huh? Yeah, you're with perfect. No. <clears throat> and Jerry's perfect too. The men have to stick together. All right, you're all perfect. 